Content warning. This podcast is intended for a mature audience, contains graphic descriptions of violence and explicit language. Hello, friends, and welcome back to Pods of the Multiverse. We're an unofficial D&D podcast where four friends play d and I'm Andy, the DM for our adventures in the world of Theros, and welcome to this, our 12th and final game for this campaign. Let's go ahead and reintroduce the characters, my friends and the players for this game right now. I'm Jimmy. I play Gron, a Minotaur Barbarian with some range. <laughs> <laughs> Whole body um, range. Full, full body range. I'm Scala. I play Andromedy, Oracle Slap Fight Champion 2021. Heck yes. My name is Jeppy. I play Clix, the Leonin Rogue, who is a lifelong loyal devotee of Krufix. Committed to the truth. <laughs> Hell yeah. And that's right, folks. This is our last game, the finale of our Theros campaign. I just want to go ahead and thank everybody who's been listening, who's been sharing. Uh, this has been a hell of a project, and I'm sure I'm speaking for everyone who uh, has just really been happy with how this has been going. Yes. Next week, we'll talk more about it in our season wrap-up episode before we begin our next campaign. So check that out. Along with that, we're going to announce next week, during that episode, where our next campaign is going to be and who is going to run it. For those of you who don't listen to the table talk anyways. And so, (laughs) without further ado, let's get into the finale. After descending into the Kragmaw, our heroes, the Triad of Fates, accompanied by Califex, passed through the labyrinthine network making up the Ragegore stronghold. Eventually arriving at the beginning of a literal labyrinth made of swirling shadows, the party encountered a powerful simulacrum of Atris, the Oracle of Half-Truths. With Gron overcome by a symbol of hopelessness, Clix was compelled into giving Atris a creation's eye. The party pursued, and after a harrowing encounter involving Clix forsaking Phoenix and reaching out to Krufix, they were able to destroy the entity and retrieve the crown. After making their way through the labyrinth, they evaded the pursuit of a massive ox-like monstrosity and found refuge in a shrine to Athreos within. After their much-needed rest, they descended towards the unknown below, only to find, seemingly waiting for them, Marukios the Undying. You stand on a narrow, spiraling staircase around the perimeter of a small stone chamber the center of which seems to stretch down into infinite darkness. You see this figure, this towering, monstrous minotaur, shadows swirling all around him, his skull-like face with empty sockets flaring with black flame, staring at the four of you. I'm going to need us all to roll some initiative. Uh, Here I was thinking we could just talk to this guy. I I mean... Look, I speak Minotaur. Gron speaks Minotaur. I could steal his will to want to fight us through sleight of hand. Anything you want. Initiative 14. 18. I got a 9 over here. Okay. The first thing that happens as he rises and screams in rage, the lair action on initiative 20, I need everybody to give me a wisdom saving throw. Is this a charm or fear effect? It could be a charm or fear effect. Okay, well, I'm immune to both of those things. And Uh, I hope it's one of those because my save was an 8. Okay. 16. And uh, clicks will roll with advantage if if it turns out to be one of those. And then 18 if it is. Okay. Mine's a (laughs) 6. All at once, the four of you see a vision. Andromedy, immediately you kind of recognize a bit of this. You are all simultaneously being drowned in lava by Perforos. You descend through this lava and fall from a red sky into the underworld. All around you, ruins of titanic structures and enormous rusted chains holding together the fragmented, arid landscape of Agonis. Failing the wisdom save, Gron and Andromedy, I now need the two of you to roll D100s. Okay. 
64. 25. Okay. Andromedy, starting with you, Andromedy, roll an 84 for me. Four. Presently, you can sense some sort of strange foreign malevolence seed into your mind, and briefly after that, it passes, and you can't really tell what happened. Gron, on your space, almost as if seeping up out of your own shadows, these small, imp, almost bat-like creatures spawn. This shadow swarm is now in your space, and on your turn, it looks like it may attack you. Gron, it's your turn. You are surrounded by these small, shadow-like creatures. What do you do? I'm going to attack them. Okay. I'm going to attack them recklessly. Going to be a 23 to hit. That'll definitely hit. (laughs) Okay. That's a 12 on the D12. So that is 18 slashing damage. All right. An additional six. Necrotic. Holy shit. (laughs) Awesome. Gron, you slice through these shadows that have appeared all around you. They have these gnarled, gnashing fangs and gaping maws, and they look like they're going to strike out at you all at once, but before they can, you cut through them, and with that powerful stroke, they are gone, dispersed in one swing. What do you do with the rest of your turn? Yeah, I'm going to... How far is this guy away from me? About 40, 45 feet away. I'm going to charge right at him, and as I reach him, activate my rage feeling the power of Mogus fill me, my eyes burning red, and I'm going to slash into him with the Blood Axe of Fury. Go for it. That is 26 to hit. That hits. And 9 slashing damage. Okay. Charging up towards him in your rage, you slash into this form, this horribly burned, scarred, towering form you know as Marukios the Undying. He looks down at you. You. I have seen you through the shadows. You are the traitor that turned Mogus against himself. Against us. Uniting him with his mortal enemy. He draws up from the shadows a giant greatsword itself seemingly wreathed in shadow flame. He's going to make a reaction against you and retaliate. That is a dirty 20 to hit. Mm -hmm. You take 12 slashing damage, halved to 6, and an additional 6 fire damage. Halved. Halved to 3. That's the end of Gron's turn. We go to clicks. Okie dokie, artichokies. Let's do this. Clicks is going to go and Attack the bad. Um, so you're up on stairs right here. So you would have to either jump down, which you can make an acrobatics check, or if you took the long way, it would be 60. If you jump down, it would be 35. Which is my movement. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and do some acrobatics, baby. With a robust and hearty meow, I roll a 21. Hell yeah. You land three-pointed, taking no fall damage. And bop, bound, boom, towards Marukios. Boom, bop, body, bop, boop. All right, uh, I'm going to attack. That's a 19 hit. 19 just hits. Whew. Okay. You see as you approach this foul, blackened plate mail covering the lower half of their form going to stab into him for 24 piercing damage. Nice. And let's go ahead and offhand this too. All right. That is a uh, 24. That'll hit. And it's an additional two piercing damage. Cool. Clicks your first blow slices through Marukios's body and you see the wound open with shadowed teeth. I need you to make a dexterity saving throw. Okay, all right. 17. Okay, that will pass. All right. However, you still take... Okay. Four points of necrotic damage. Okay. 
and five points of fire damage as this gout of shadow flame is expelled from the wound you just created. Okay. Ouch. I cannot be slain. I asked for power from a god. Instead, I was answered by a titan. Plex, is that the rest of your turn? That'll be the rest of it. Awesome. It is now his turn. And now, I will deliver Mogus a burned world. Taking his great sword in both hands, flames shooting from around it, he's going to slash into Gron. And probably misses. That is only a 17 to hit. That just hits. Just hits. Gron, you take 14 slashing, halved to 7, and an additional 12, halved to 6, fire. Wow. I... I rolled an 11 and two sixes. So, uh-huh. <laughs> yikes. At least we know that's as bad as it's going to get. That's, you think as bad as it's going to get. And turning to clicks, he attacks with his second swing. 18 plus eight. Yep. That is going to be... That, uh, narrowly, narrowly hits, yeah. 12 slashing damage. The fire damage oh. seeming only to occur on the first strike. All right, turn. we're going to go ahead and use our reaction. Okay. I'm going to eat the 12 because I'm going to use Hellish Rebuke. Ah! Ooh! Nice. Go for it. Well, you got to go for it. Make a deck save, bruh. That is a deck save from him. That's only a 10. That ain't going to do it. <laughs> that ain't going to cut it. Okay. Prepare thyself. 22 fire damage. Ooh! Clix, you see from your powerful Hellish Rebuke reaction, he takes the brunt of it. It it seems whatever resistances this foe may have, fire is not one of them. How about that? That is the end of his turn. We go to Andromedy. All right, I'm going to move forward just a little bit, so I'm just within 30 feet of Gron. Down the stairs and over, or are you jumping? Uh, I don't want to. Down the stairs and over. So I'm going to first cast haste on Gron. All right. And then using my voice of authority, I will say this is the moment for which you were chosen. Strike and strike again. And you can use your reaction to hit this guy. Nice. Don't need to tell me twice. (laughs) It's a 24 to hit. That'll hit. Oh, man. That is 11 slash death. Gron, you slash into his form similarly to clicks. On Clix's devastating attack, you've reached another point where the wound that you create with your great axe opens with this maw of teeth. Gron, I needed to make a dex save. Fifteen. Okay. That will just pass, and so you take only four necrotic damage and four fire damage halved to two. Is that the best you got? <sighs> Best. Go ahead. Okay, I'm just going to use my bonus action to shoot a little mothball. Oh, of course you are. Uh, a 28 hits, I presume. <laughs> Holy shit, yeah, it does. <laughs> so that's going to be 4 plus my proficiency is 3, 7 force damage. Awesome. And that's all I can do. Andromedy, at the end of your turn, Rukios the Undying is going to use a legendary action. No, no help from oracles. No help from gods. You see him point his great sword towards Gron to cast Dispel Magic. Yeah, we'll counter that. Okay. Uh, what level are you using Counterspell at? Third. Uh, dispel Magic is also a third level spell, I believe. It is, and he is only casting it at third level. You see him go to undo the haste you just applied. Andromedy, describe your Counterspell. As Andromedy often likes to undo magic as the shadows coalesce around Marukios' sword, Andromedy finds the one thread of mana that holds the spell together and uses their control of magic to just pluck it away, watching the whole thing fall in tatters. Awesome. Thanks, friend. I do what I can. After this exchange, Califex leaping into action. Look at him go. Using his movement and his cunning action, dashes to Gron's side. Together, 
and makes his attack, drawing his spear behind his shield, strikes into the armor of Marukios, unable to find his mark. Califex misses on his turn. We go back to the top of the round, and we have another lair action. I need everybody to go ahead and make me another wisdom save, please. 15. Oof. Two. We've got a 10. Everyone sees another of these visions, seemingly from the point of view of Marukios himself, in Agonus, a voice whispers in his dead ear to his tormented and restless soul about finding a way to exact Mogus' ultimate and true destructive goal. These nightmares smell of such anger and revenge. Such a familiar flavor. An exquisite and rare specimen. Yes. Yes, I can show you the way to make your savage dreams come true. A long and thin arm stretches out from a shadowed portal with long, black nails-like claws plucking at the soul of Marukios. It will simply cost you your worst nightmares. Failing the check, I need Gron and Andromedy to roll another d100. Ah, uh, okay. Man. <laughs> uh, do you know what the odds of rolling the same thing on the d% twice in a row are? Is it one in 10,000? Oh, is it another... Is it's it another, another 64. Like 64. Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. I have no idea what's going on, by the by. I know. <laughs> it, and and uh, and we haven't really gotten enough rounds for it to really kick in yet. Bron. Oh, mine was 66. What the fuck? Okay. Wow. All right. Gron and Andromedy both roll me a d4. Four. Uh, a one. Okay. That's the lair action. Gron, it is now your turn. All right. Does Haste give me a third attack? Yes. Okay. So I am going to just attack a bunch of times. Just sl- hack and slash at this guy with my great axe. I'll get into a flanking position. Just so you know these shadows that are kind of emanating from that statue that I described in the previous game, when you step into it, it seems that these shadows have some sort of coalesced magical darkness emanating from this ruined and wretched statue. You lose your vision completely. Which would cancel out the advantage. Yes, it would. Mm. Okay. Then I don't want to do that. (laughs) So not wanting to enter the darkness, I'm just going to continue attacking recklessly. Here's attack number one. 24. That'll hit. That is 12 slashing damage. And another six necrotic. Okay. Does it seem like the necrotic is sticking? It seems like the necrotic is having an impact, but not its full effect. Okay. I'm going to use my bonus action to activate a wrathful smite. Nice. Awesome. On this next one. That's a 20 to hit. That hits. Okay. 18 slashing, 2 psychic, and he needs to make me a wisdom saving throw. Wow. Even with advantage, he only gets an 11. Yeah, he fails. and Yikes. (laughs) And he is frightened of me. Okay. Unfortunately, he appears to be immune to fear. Oh, man. All right. Makes sense. He stares down at you, literal balls of black fire for eyes, unfazed. Yeah, scariest fucking thing is probably not afraid of very much. Okay. Gron, opening these dreadful wounds, I need you to make a dexterity saving throw. 20. That will pass. And so you take six halved to three necrotic, and then... Six halved to three half to one fire damage because you're resistant and you made the save. So I'm going to attack one more time. Awesome. That's not going to hit. That's an 18. That just misses. We've learned the AC. (laughs) 
And that's my turn. At the end of this exchange, he's going to use another of his legendary actions. You are brave. That will get you nowhere. Pointing his sword again towards Gron, I need you to make a constitution saving throw. 22. That will pass. However, I need to roll a buttload of dice as he casts Blight, driving his sword towards you. Jeez. Gron, you take 34. (laughs) No! Halved to 17 necrotic damage. Why is it halved? Because Because you you made made the the save. save. Oh, good. (laughs) As your body rides from this necrotic infliction, you are able to overcome the brunt of the damage, still suffering partial effect. (laughs) That was Garan. We go to Clicks. All right. Laying into him. Okay, my first roll was a 19, so I know I hit. That ties, yep. So it's a hit. 23 piercing damage. Oh, 18 on the dice, not a 19 for the offhand. Damn it. I'm one away from a crit. An additional four piercing damage. Okay. Clicks, I need you to make a dexterity saving throw is. as you open another wound. Uh, eight. That will fail. Yeah, it will. You take seven necrotic damage and six fire damage. Two gay. Clicks. At the end of your turn, he's going to use his final legendary action. Mm-hmm. I can see you are brave as well. Lo, how far the help of gods brings brave heroes towards their doom. And Clicks, I need you to make a wisdom saving throw. Mm. Five. Saving throws where the effect is charm or frightened are rolled with advantage. Clicks, you're going to roll this with advantage. Oh, let me roll again then. Twelve. Mm. Passes. <laughs> no. Yeah, I know. Just missing the save DC, everyone sees above Clicks a shadowed crown of madness take hold. Clicks, you are temporarily charmed as this crown appears. Gron becomes your enemy in this battle. You're compelled to attack him on your next turn. Perfect. (laughs) Gron, you see Clicks staring back at you with an intent to attack. Uh, what's up, buddy? As we go to Marukios. I will show you all what fear looks like. He drives his sword into the stone before him, and I need everyone within 30 feet to make me a wisdom saving throw. This is against a fear effect, and so those conditions would apply, I guess, with advantage from Califex and Clicks, and Andromedy would be immune. I got a 17. 16. Yikes. Both of you pass, seemingly, as a malevolent fear tries to overtake you. Califex, however, failing, to roll an additional dice. You see Califex as this hungering aspect washes across the room, falls to his knees, clutching his head. No, no, we can't, we can't continue. This place, no, it will kill us all. Stop, you must stop. Seemingly overcome by maddening dread. It's all right, it's gonna be okay. That is the end of his turn. And that is Andromeda. Okay. So, yeah, I think I'm just going to try and hit him with a Therica's Acid Arrow. All right. Okay, a 26 should hit, yes? 26 hits. Okay, so, going to be, uh, that's crappy. Three ones on these 4d4. It's going to be seven acid damage, and then... He'll take more on the end of his next turn. Okay. Anything else from Andromedy? Bonus action, Mothball. There's the nat 20. Ooh, yeah. Seerly, getting it in. Uh, yeah. Glob of magma-like insectile goop right in the eye. 
for nine points of force damage. Nice. So cool that my familiar did with a bonus action what I spent a second level spell slot to do. I love it. Man, you, oh man, you simultaneously love and hate to see it. For real? <laughs> Gran and Clicks, from your view, you can see that Marukios is sustaining piles of damage. If this were any mere mortal, he would be well and beyond Death's Door by now. But all of these wounds seem to only be empowering the shadows that embrace him up to this point. Go ahead and roll me insight checks. I'll say all three of you can do this. 19. Only a 10. 18. Yeah, Clicks and Kron, you can tell that as the body of Marukios wanes, something much darker within is stirring. As you realize that at the end of Andromeda's turn, off the D4 resulting in a 1, off the D164, Andromeda, it's only been a few turns. You've only been in this comma in a few moments, and yet you feel as though you have been here for ages fighting against this force. I need to make a constitution saving throw. Okay. Mm. Now let's see how bad it is. I got a 10. A 10 will fail as you immediately succumb to one level of exhaustion. Okay. As though you have been fighting this fight for ages. Yeah, Andromedes. After casting these spells and commanding their familiar to attack. They sort of slump. Their positive outlook drained out of them. They just breathe heavily and wearily. How much longer? How much longer? Andromedy, go ahead and make me a religion check with advantage. 16. Okay. From creation's eye, you feel the presence of your god drawing near. After that moment... Marukios, now with his legendary actions restored, lunges towards Clix with his blade, making a melee spell attack of a dirty 20. Oh, okay. No, it's a six. Six plus eight is... Fourteen. Misses. Fourteen. Missing. Interesting. Andromedy, even in this exhausted, perilous state, you are able to bend at Destiny's Threads clicks avoiding what could have possibly been a devastating inflict wounds by the hand of Marukios. Hold out a little longer. Clothis is coming. I believe you. We go to Califex on the ground. No. No. No, she... She will not be able to save us from this. Tries to stand. Has to make his attack with disadvantage. Missing with a six plus six as he is still fraught with this dread. We go back to the top. Another lair action now, as you watch from the wounds of Marukios undying, these shadowed tendrils stretch across piercing pillars, sundering the ground. Instead of a wisdom saving throw, I need everybody to give me a dexterity saving throw. 22. 19. Natural 20. Wow. All three of you pass. You'll love to see it. Somebody roll me a d6, please. I'll do it. Three. You watch as an enormous section of the room is sundered and plummets into the darkness beneath you all. Now I need that wisdom save. Fifteen. Nineteen. Twenty-three. Hey, there we go. Everybody passes this time as another flash of this odd saga of Marukios enters your mind this time. From his perspective, being led by this figure who has spoken to them towards a titanic archway where this nightmare muse speaks. They have no idea the power they've locked away in these cages. They'd rather fear what they do not understand than seek to wield the most powerful entities of their world. Such a shame. With a flick of their elongated fingers, they peel away the small piece of this great seal 
and you see a shadowy tendril stretch out. This ichor like blood and shadow beginning to infect his undead body and mind. We flash out of this vision as we go to Gran, as Marukios, as you see him now, stands before you. All right. So I'm noticing what just happened here with Marukios. Uh, I'm starting to see why they call this guy the Undying. Gron, Gron, be careful! You be careful. And I'm going to activate a smite, and I'm going to <laughs> recklessly attack him. Because I don't know how to be careful. Oh, that's double fours. Thirteen to hit. Thirteen will miss. No matter, trying it again. Now that's a crit. Hell yeah! Yes! Yes, yes, yes. yes. So, here we go. This is going to be a lot. I'm ready. It's going to be a lot here. Okay. That's 19 slashing damage. That's 3 psychic damage and 7 necrotic damage. Gron, the hulking, unyielding form of Marukios before you, man, buckles at the power of your smite invoked from Mogus. Paint a picture. Wait, what's happening? <laughs> You, you killed him. You killed him. I killed him. I just didn't expect it to happen. Gron swings out and misses one time, then really aggravated, the fire of Mogus burning in his eyes, comes back around for another hit and buries the edge of his blood axe of fury right into the neck of Marukios, beheading him, and he falls to his knees. You still hear his voice, even though his head rolls to the ground. No. No. I have been given a new destiny. This is not my end. An enormous gout of shadow flame erupts from his corpse. From all of the wounds dealt to him by your blows, the entire chamber fractures at the seams. Everybody give me a dexterity saving throw as your surroundings quickly become unstable. 19. Ah! <laughs> Two 20s. Double nat 20s. It's only going to be a 9 for me. Elfex has to make this with disadvantage because of his dread. And still gets two 18s. Okay. Man, you guys are really passing, like, all of these saves, which is great. Andromedy, you are knocked prone and take eight bludgeoning damage. Okay. I can live with that. As the terrain and the pillars and the walls around you begin collapsing, the rest of your party, you see, are not knocked prone, but Clix, Gron, and Califex... You each do take four bludgeoning damage. Gron reduced to two. I maintain concentration on the haste. Awesome. As you all watch this fractured chamber fall down into darkness. We have to, we have to get out. We have to leave the stairs. Califex still seemingly overcome with dread. The initiative still stands, but in this moment, how do you all react. The ground's going to fall out from under us? Is falling out from under you. Uh, I'll look to Gron and point to Califex and say, you need to help him. we got to get out of here. Yeah, you're right. Okay, make for the stairs. And I'm going to grab Califex. Awesome. You should still have an action. Haste isn't just limited to making attacks. Right. I don't feel like I need to disengage. Maybe I'll dash. I'm going to grab Califex and dash down the stairs. Give me a quick athletics check as you go for Califex. Sure. 24. Okay. It seems like for a moment he is unyielding as he lays on the ground, but you are able to easily pick him up and make for the stairs. As we go to clicks. Would I be able to jump up to the staircase using second story work? Ah, you would be able to do that. Let's go ahead and do that. Yeah, you would be able to run towards the topmost section of these stairs that you can see, and with your dash, climb the wall of the staircase all the way up much farther ahead than Gron and Califex. As we go to Andromedy. Andromedy will use half the movement to stand up. 
No, Andromeda is just going to cast Levitate on themselves. I'll hover 20 feet up towards um, towards where Clix is. Oh, right, because you can just, like, kind of elevate Yeah, I can sort of push, wall, yeah, push right? my way up right. the wall. Okay, very cool. Uh, so you're you're about halfway up that wall right now, levitating. Califex, still under some dreadful state in Gron's arms, we go to a new lair action. You watch as the entire chamber collapses. Almost like time is moving in slow motion. You watch these fractured ruins descend. First, the platform, then the columns as they break apart, and the stairs. You got far, not far enough, as this entire room descends. You find yourself swirling past black clouds, unable to recognize moment from moment, second from second, possibly only an instant possibly an eternity, you are falling through this void until you come down out of a layer of thick red haze into a ruined realm, familiar from your vision moments before of Marukios in Agonis. The ruined remains of this chamber fall onto an enormous set of stairs. In the middle of a large, ancient stone pathway, in the middle of this desolate landscape, you look about and see impossibly large chains that rise out of the terrain and extend into the swirling clouds above. Steps above you lead toward a pair of gargantuan columns made of interlocked stone and black marble, and resting between them an archway of pure gold. Beyond that, you see a glowing threshold, like an undulating tapestry, and more terrifying than you can dream, monstrous forms lurking beyond as you are overcome with pure terror. Finally, you see the slumped body of the recently slain Marukios. Rising out of it, a shadow, a vessel, powered by a small fraction of a piercing from the veil behind him. Marukios the Undying has been slain, but as you see, made of smoke and darkness, Marukios, death's tyrant, stands before you. Clicks, Gron, and Califex all need to roll me dexterity saving throws. I suppose if Gron is holding Califex, he would be immune Gron, I'm going to say it's a flat roll for you since you're carrying somebody. I got a six, so not great. Okay. Going to be a 17. Wow, these are some low D6s. Clicks, you take five bludgeoning damage, and Gron, you take half of that halved again, so I don't know, fucking one, I guess, as all the platforms come to rest in this scene. Before we re-enter initiative, I want to say everybody, go ahead and give me perception checks. 11. It's a nat 1. I'm just too dang tired. How long have I been keeping this evil at bay? Indeed. No further perceivance there as we go back to Gron. Okay. Does 40 feet get me to him? Are you going to put Califex down, I assume? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to drop him. Eight. All right, I can get Man, there. barbarians can go far. Jesus. You run up these fractured remains of the previous chamber, up these stairs, and towards this shadowed death tyrant, still taking the form of Marukios, though now himself just darkness. Go ahead. Just run it directly at him. I am going to... I'm going to use my blinding smite. Okay. And I'm just going to start wailing on him. Recklessly. It's a 25 to hit. That will hit. 16 slashing, plus 6 necrotic, plus some more d8s. 15 radiant. Ooh, baby. Okay, nice. And a con save. That's some spice. With advantage, that is a 17. Yeah, that, that passes. Gron, is that the end of your turn? No, I think that was only one attack. That was only one fucking attack. Go for it. I mean, I put all the pepper on that one, but here comes some more. 
all the pep. <laughs> now we got the salt. Yeah, the salt might be yep. on this one. <laughs> That's a 26 to hit. Yeah. That hits. Well, I'm not salty about that. Oh. That's 18 slashing. Okay. Gron, at the end of your turn, you see the wicked flame-wreathed greatsword still in this version of Marukios's hands, now covered in gnarled black teeth. Not casting a spell, but instead with its legendary action using a malicious blade beam. This is how I'm going to determine this action, the entire fight. I need all four of you to roll off. Roll, Just roll a flat d20 for me. Lowest roll loses. 14. 10. 11. Califex got a 12. Okay. Looks like it's me. Andromedy, I need you to roll a d10. Okay. Three. No way. Okay. So just out of context, you know what's going on. Oh, I know what you've done. These are eye rays. These are fucking eye rays. And on a three, he slashes out into the air with his shadowed blade. Oh, no. And it echoes across the space, striking you Andromedy. I'm not even going to make you roll a wisdom save because this fear beam has no effect on you. (sighs) It was meant to be. Andromedy, roll me another religion check with advantage. Sure. This should be a flat roll, because I'm exhausted. Uh, ooh, that's only a ten. Okay. Moving on from that, we have Clix's turn. All right. Gonna muster up my remaining strength and go and attack. First roll was a two. Second was a nat 20. Nice. Yeah, I'm just gonna put you flanking, because you were the included. 37 piercing damage. Ooh, Holy shit. That's some snooker took right there. Wow. Nice. Oh my god. Nice hit. Go ahead and follow it up with the boom, bop, bing, bam with the uh, offhand attack. Let's do it. Was that with the sword or with the dagger? Absolutely with the sword. Okay. You notice, as devastating of an attack as that would have been, he is resistant to that non-magic. Well, that's fucking great. Uh, well, I also crit on this one with a 19 on the die, so... What the fuck? Nice. Oh my god. <laughs> Additional five piercing damage from the magic dagger. Very cool. Anything else from clicks? No. Whatever bullshit he's about to do is retaliation. That's it. You see he holds back his sword once more with two hands and slashes through the air again with another of these blade beams as a second legendary action. Everybody go ahead and roll off again, please. We got a 13 this time. 16. 7. Great. Califex on a 2. Oh. Oh, <laughs> oh no. no. Oh, shit. I want somebody else to do this. Somebody roll me a d10 for I got you. Thanks. I'll do it. Oh, okay. Go I, ahead. I think Gron, I think Gron, Gron has to do it. Gron, <laughs> yeah, it's got to be Gron. Gron's got to his fate. I said somebody, I meant Gron. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's a one. You see this blade beam streak towards Califex. He has to make a wisdom saving throw. No. Failing that throw, you see a look on Califex's face. The dread washed away... Andromedy, from your perspective, with an intent to attack as he is charmed. And we go to his turn. His meaning Marukios. The Death's Tyrant's turn. Just say Marukios' turn. Marukios' fucking turn. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. The first thing that happens, swirling from the vacant head of this shadowed figure, you see something that resembles a maw almost looking like a whirlpool of shadow and darkness straight into its form as a negative energy cone is unleashed. This visage, Gron, you see pointed directly towards you. And with that, he's going to make three of these blade beam attacks towards Clix, Andromedy, and Califex. So I need the three of you. Gron, you can roll for Califex again to roll me a d10. Six. Eight. Also six. Starting with clicks, I need you to make a strength saving throw. Five. Clicks, a tremendous force of telekinesis takes hold over your body. You begin floating off the ground, 
off of this platform into empty space. That's great. Still floating, you are restrained, hanging in the air. The other six was Califax. I'm going to roll strength save for him. Califax passes his strength save. You see he is not telekinetically moved. Andromedy on the eight. Make a dexterity saving throw. Okay. Uh, 14. Andromedy. I don't know how this affects levitation, but you see around your feet, moving up your legs. You are restrained and slowly being turned to stone. Lovely. Did someone have a petrification code? Oh, it's Califex. Yeah, Califex. Who is currently charmed. While Marukios is occupied in this way, mm-hmm. I'm going to take an attack using my sentinel feet. Oh, shit. 27 to hit. That'll fucking hit. 11 slashing damage. Nice. The lowest I can do. Not so nice. <laughs> <laughs> that was his turn. Andromedy, it's your turn. End of its next turn. Okay, yeah, it's your turn. Okay. Hmm. This is a bit of a pickle. I'm not great at dex saves. I guess I'm just going to cast haste on myself to try and give myself advantage on this saving throw. Pretty much the best thing I can do. If a 14 didn't make it, that's above average for me. Okay. If you're levitating 20 feet in the air when you cast, you would fall, basically. It's about 20 feet. Levitation does say when the spell ends, you float harmlessly to the ground. Okay. I'll give that to you. Anything with your action. Because I'm hasted, I will still get to do something. Even if it's the last thing I do. I can't really see what's going on above me. But I can have at least Surly try to deliver a spell. Yeah, I'll have them try and deliver an attack. Okay. Does a 21 hit? 21 will hit. Okay, so this Marukios will now take... 8 points of lightning damage and 12 points of force damage as Searly goes with a flyby, drops a shocking grasp on him. Nice. Does that also mean they can't take reactions? Yes, can't take reactions. Okay. Andromedy. Yep. Give me a dexterity saving throw. Hot damn. 21. What the fuck? Good. That was... With disadvantage? No, with advantage, because that's why I cast haste on myself. You get advantage on dex saves. Oh, got it. Exhaustion is only checks. Yeah. First level of exhaustion is only checks. Right, but restrained is disadvantage on dex saves. Mmm. Mmm. Hmm. Oh, sorry. Okay. I, but, like, statistically, this sucks. I don't want to take that away. Like... If, it, if that's the rule, that's the rule. Like, uh, You rolled them at the same time, too, right? Yeah, I did. I did. I, no, I feel so shitty about this. Do you want me to just roll one die now? Reroll it. I think that's the way to do it. Twelve. Okay. It was meant to be. It was meant to be. It was meant to be. Andromedy, you are petrified and turned to stone. Well, shit. Andromedy, do you say anything as you sense your body being overtaken by this petrification? Andromedy trusts in fate. As they lose control of their body and it calcifies, they close their eyes serenely and say, I am not ready to go, but go I must. And then they're a statue. Okay. It is Califex's turn. Using a movement and a cunning action dash, Gron, you see your companion charging at you, spear in hand. He makes an attack. Whoa, 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 what are you doing? Finishing this. Hitting with a 19. You take 8 slashing damage, reduced to 4. And as his spear point pierces your body, it erupts with a burst of radiant energy as he drops his divine smite into this attack. For some really low goddamn D8s, you take nine radiant damage. Why? Why? What's going on? Gron, Gron, it's up to you. Give me an insight check and I'll give you advantage since it's Califex. 20. Califex is charmed by Marukios somehow, and you know that quite possibly the only way to break it is to harm Califex. Okay. As we go to the top of the round... All those who are not currently petrified, I need you to please make me another round of wisdom saving throws. 17. 3. Okay. 
Your mind, once more, is taken to a vision. This time, however, it is distorted, disfigured. Everything is in a lens of haze and shadow. Levitating in front of this very archway, you see a wicked form. Before, you only saw their hands, their arm, but now you see them. The bottom half of their head resembles that of a human's. The top half consists of two large black horns that frames a void around the upper half of their head. No upper face, no eyes, no nose. In their place, only black smoke emanating from where the top of their mouth and their upper lip end. This black smoke swirls around their head and swirls down around the entire perimeter of their body. Looking down at Marukios before them, this voice says, Take pride. You are but the first of my trials. We'll never survive the process. Phoenix has such a love for his returned, but even they have their mortal flaws. Your god will certainly be pleased at the chaos. And instead of speaking back or thinking at all, the only thing in your mind from the perspective of Marukios is a terrible echo. Destroy. Consume. Destroy. Consume. Flex, I need you to roll a d100, please. 28. What? Oh my god. This is what okay. happens when you use these random tables. And this is and this is exactly what I love. So clicks all of a sudden your perspective of you floating out in seemingly space between two large pieces of land that are tethered by giant chains sort of collapse and become incomprehensible to you. For the duration, anything in melee is treated as ranged and anything in range is treated as melee. What? What? <laughs> Wait. Okay. <laughs> and so you perceive time and space around you. you. You can tell I'm really just trying to unpack this for myself. <laughs> time and space around you kind of bends and folds in a spectacular way. You perceive yourself next to Marukios. That is what you perceive. You're not on your own after all. I can hit him from here. Gron, you actually do see Quicks kind of bend and move through space. <laughs> and mechanically, this is what I'm going to say, the farther away you get from Marukios, the closer to him you will okay. get. And so, in fact, I'm actually going to put you about right there. Okay, so I'm going to cast level 6 pool noodle, and I turn into a pool noodle and get yeah, exactly. close to Marukio. There you go. <laughs> um, that was the lair action. We're up to Gron. Does that affect me in any way? No. And he's not flanking. Okay. So I, I'm i really hurt emotionally by Califex's Aww. assailing me, even though he he didn't hurt me very much, and he never was able to in our kind of sparring. Uh, I was always a little <laughs> bit stronger than him. So uh, I am going to re-up my Storm Aura. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, and I'm going to say Clix isn't exactly the right spot to not get burnt for once. That is correct. Yeah. Uh, however, Marukios and Califex do take three points of fire damage. And Califex's charm ends. Gron! Gron, what have I done? Don't worry about that now. Eyes on Marukios. He sort of steals himself quickly by your words. Go for it. All right. Here we go. I'm going to use a Wrathful Smite. Awesome. That's a 22 to hit. That hits. That's 22 slashing damage. Haha. <laughs> Six necrotic damage and six psychic damage. That's all the highest dice. Okay. Nice. And he, he can't be feared. He's immune. Okay. Okay. Is that your turn? No, I'm going to hit him again. Oh my god, that's right. Always. I always forget. Always. That's a 20 to hit. That hits. And not quite as good this time. That is 12 slashing damage. Okay. You slash at the shadows of this tyrant having some effect you can see that they're starting to come apart and at every seam you can see the essence of this malevolence 
tethered in some way to the veil, the threshold between the massive archway beyond this platform. Consume. Destroy. You hear these words from his empty void in front of you. Ending your turn, he's going to use a legendary action to make another blade beam attack. Gron clicks, I'll roll for Califex. Go ahead and just roll off on a d20. Seven. Four. That's going to be Gron. You take this blade beam, roll a d10. Four. And I need you to make, please, a dexterity saving throw. Nineteen. All right. You can see this blade beam strike into you, and you feel as though you are going to be slowed by the exhaustive weight of this terrible force. But you are not slowed. Whew. As we go to Clix. Clix, who is stealing himself. Yeah. Having a, a time. We're on a journey. <laughs> Yeah, Clicks will step backwards, wink, wink, into the direction of... Make an intelligence saving throw. Fucking six. Okay. You actually do move backwards. Okay. Well, I've got a lot of movement to burn, so we're going to try again. Okay. I'm going to... Oh, God, no. I can't move backwards again and fail. <laughs> if you want to burn your dash, you can make another check. Okay, I'll burn the dash. All right, so do I make another another intelligence check? Okay. Please tell me a 17 does it. 17 will do it. Incomprehensibly navigating through this warped space, you manage to find yourself next to Marukios. All right, we're going to attack now. Awesome. The dash is bonus action, right? Yep. Okay. It misses it a 17, right? It does. So that was my turn, just... Uh, didn't move right, and then did. Ah, unfortunately for Clix, uh, their turn seems to be in vain. However, at the end of your turn, this odd space warping ends. You are still held by telekinesis, but you are next to Marukios. Okay. As we go to Marukios, Gron, Clix, and Califex need to make d10 rolls for me. Seven. Eight. Clicks just as soon as you are out of this disorienting space, you see a blade beam streak towards you. I need you to make a dex save. Nat 20. Nice. Hell yeah. You can see your shoulder and your arm pass through the threshold of this beam, and for a moment, you see your skin almost take on a, a stone like appearance, but you quickly move your arm out of the way and do not begin turning to stone. Gron, in the seven, I need you to make a wisdom save. It's a nat 20. Get the fuck out. Oh my god, two nat 20s. <laughs> Holy shit. How do you guys roll saving throws like this? <laughs> you can feel yourself begin to lose consciousness and fall into a state of magical sleep. <sighs> Gron! Oh. oh. No, not now! I'm with you! And you are able to steal yourself and maintain consciousness unaffected by the sleep beam. However, just as soon as Califex gives you these brave words, you see an innervation beam dig into Califex. On a failed con save. No. Gron, you have to finish this. You see a wash of necrotic energy overtake him. And Califex falls to the ground. Brother! Uh, this is bad. This is bad. <laughs> oh, I'm going to use my sentinel feet to attack this fuck as he's killing my friends. 22 to hit. 22 hits. 14 slash damage. As I angrily slash into him. Ron, you can tell this form, as wicked as it is, is starting to give way. Whatever sort of tether it has to its source, you do not know or understand yet. But it seems to be, well... If a shadow of a villain could be on Death's Door, on Death's Door. Aren't we literally on Death's Door? Pretty close. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Huh. Oh, jeez. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, good one. That was its turn. Andromeda is petrified. I don't think it's make his death save. Okay. We go back to the top for a 
Layer action. Gron and clicks. I need you to both make me wisdom saving throws. 18. Four. Clicks. Yes. You sense a flash in your vision, similar to that of when you invoked for the first time your new god's power, that of Krufix. And you see a shimmer of a form in the blasted sky overhead. Clicks, what do you say as you call out, sensing the presence of Krufix drawing near? Time to see if the truth really has a purpose. You see the form of your god, made of literal stardust, take hold in the sky, four arms all pointing in the same direction, towards this giant archway, and he says, Behold, the face which drives the world apart at the seams, beyond the tight-bound veil of its own face. I sense the cloak of the unseen at work, aiding this realm walker, a remarkable gift from Phoenix, hidden from even my sight and knowledge, but no more. With a pulse of energy, his arms reveal another figure. It hisses out in terror you see now in person. No! The gods hold no threats over me! The form of the Nightmare Muse himself draws near you all as we go to Grand. Okay. I'm just going to say it's a good thing I'm petrified. I think I'm just going to keep hitting Marukios with the great axe. Okay. That's a 16 to hit. That will miss. Going to try it again. That's a 26 to hit. Oh, yeah. And that's going to be 17 slashing damage and an additional 4 necrotic. Okay. His form hanging by a thread, the shadows becoming completely unstable in Go ahead and give me a perception check. Eleven. You can see this this tether kind of extending out of this form, but you can't see precisely where it's ending. Okay. Okay. I can shove him with my horns. Okay. Go ahead and try. Say that. That's a save. That's a save for me. Yep. It's a strength save. With advantage, that is only a twelve. Really? Wow. That fails. So I'm going to push him past clicks, hoping to provoke an opportunity attack? 10 feet. I am absolutely going to. 26 to hit. That hits. 10 piercing damage. This is with the short sword? Correct. So 5 damage. Alright. Ron, is that the end of your turn? That is the end of my turn. We go to clicks. Going to head over to Califix's body and take the petrification potion. The salve, you can find it easily. Alright, I'm going to Jump down if I have to, whatever it takes to get to Andromeda. Give me an acrobatics check. It is uh, 21. It's a little bit far down. You'll take half of this. Take three bludgeoning damage. Ouch. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and use it on Andromeda. We need you back. Clicks. Oh, no. Oh, God. Clicks. No. I need you to make a DC 10 medicine oh, check. Oh, no. And whatever's on the dice is all I got. I have no wisdom. Oh, no. Here we go. Good luck. 13. <gasps> yes. Absolutely yes. Andromedy. Lucky 13. You are yeah. freed from your petrification. Uh, I see clicks as I come out of this stupor, anointing me with this remedy, and say, I know we've been through a lot together, but buy me a drink first. <laughs> There'll be time for that later. We need you now. We're nothing without you, friend. Andromeda, you also see crew fix above you. That's Clix's turn. Marukios, now seeing only Gron, make his attack. Consume. Destroy. Destroy. Consume. Gron, I need you to roll three separate D10s. Six, seven, and eight. In order, Gron, I need you to make a strength saving throw. Nat 20 plus 5. You take this first blade beam, and telekinesis tries to restrain you, but you are just too beefy and shrug it off easily. With the 7, I need you to make a wisdom saving throw. 15. You can feel again this strange magical unconsciousness try to take hold this sleep 
Califex behind you on the ground. Just that image is enough to make you stand. And finally, on the eight, I need to make a dexterity saving throw. 17. You see this final slash strike into your chest, and for a moment, it turns gray, almost stone-like, but disperses. Gron, passing against all three blade beams. <laughs> make a goddamn religion check with advantage. Oh my god. <laughs> Six. You fucking hate to see it. God I've damn. never, I have not. Mechanical rolls, great. Narrative rolls, bad. <laughs> the whole game. It's so bad. It's so bad. It sucks. Remind Man, me to sorry. take religion as a proficiency next time we play in I Theros. I mean, even just, like, statistically, that sucks. Like, you have advantage. What the fuck? Yeah, it's a five and a six. Ouch. <laughs> you hate to see it. I'm doing this on my own. Yeah. Andromedy, go to you. All right, so I'm going to try and get up to where the fight is happening with my movement. And then see what spell slots I still have left. You rise up from these scattered remains of the chamber you started this fight in, upstairs and other debris, and you not only see this form of Marukios, you also see this other form in the distance. And suddenly you are overcome by strange terror. Make a religion check with advantage for me. Oh dang, that's a nat 20. 27 total. Andromeda, you can immediately tell, thanks to your creation's eye, that the veil, the threshold of whatever this is behind this figure, is the source of all of this malevolent power that you have felt in the Kragmaw, in Death Bellow Canyon, even in Akros. On a nat 20, you also know that that source is being wielded. Marukios is being wielded as a weapon, as a experiment, like this. Finally, on your nat 20, in an instant, the sky above has got a destiny herself. And she says, as you look upon this scene, Threads of destiny, bind them. They must answer for this cry. Joining Krufix and Clothis in the sky, you see the forms of Mogus and Rois. Rois, joining, says, Look, brother, how this one turns our people against us. And Mogus simply saying, <laughs> What do you do? Also, on a nat 20, I'll just give it to you. You can tell. I mean, it's Ashiok. They're preparing an action. They go immediately after you. Ashiok is preparing an action. God damn it, you should have left me petrified. I love them. They're great. They scare the shit out of me. Okay. Andromedy, taking all of this in, will declare, Faceless meddler, the destiny of this world will not endure your tampering idly. You are not meant to be here, and you will go back to your place. And with that, I'd like to... I'd like to cast a fourth level Witch Bolt on Marukios. Okay. Holy shit. No. I thought 4d12 would be enough. I'm gonna need 8, because that's an at 20. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Oh. Oh, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. What the fuck? Bring us home, Andromedy. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> they could. They absolutely could. Easily. You know, I'm so used to, like, you know, you make your dramatic speech, you... you and then you whiff it. And then you whiff it, right? But <laughs> I don't think I even have 8d12. Oh, damn. We, we actually got something here. 8d12, lightning damage. They're all ones. <laughs> here we go. Uh, this is insane. This should be an average of 52. Okay. 56 like <laughs> <laughs> Andromedy. Paint the picture. Gladly. I summon a massive coil of threads from my book. 
they all twine into one long braid that wraps around Marukios in a knot and just crackles with red lightning. And if you'll permit me, that braid then will try and continue down whatever is connecting this figure to Marukios and try to also slam them with whatever force remains in it. The power of the spell travels a great distance until it is immediately and suddenly halted in a barrier of invulnerability around this figure's form. Looking back at you in a hiss, they say, What grand heroics! I look forward to seeing more of that next time we meet. And they begin in a shimmer to cast a spell. I don't know if Andromeda wants to counter. I don't have the slots left to do it. Okay. You see in a shimmer, Clothis shoots thread like a bolt, terrifying power towards this figure. And as they dimension door away, you see a small tear of their cloak is left behind and drifts to the ground in front of you. We exit initiative as Marukios's form disperses. Clothis, pointing, says to all of you, There, that is the wound to destiny. What was that thing? A hidden being from the sight of every god in Nyx. As I speak that, I'm going to kneel down to Califex and give him a cure wounds before he bleeds out. He gets seven hit points back if it matters. Okay. Gal, are you there? <gasps> oh, Gron. It's okay. Andromedy. You're safe now. I look to Andromedy. Thank you. It was not yet his time. My arm, I can't, I can't feel my arm. Andromeda, you can see, even though you, you cure his wounds, you can tell his entire right arm and up to halfway past his shoulder has this horrible echo of a scar from the blade beam. Uh, it's only an 11. You don't know what sort of effects this might have, but even on an 11, you can tell that his arm is... Physically useless. You'll be okay. Oh, Gron, is it over? For now. Krufix, looking over the scene, says, It is not over yet, heroes. Clothis, speaking up. The damage must be healed. The wound must be closed. My oracle. Andromedy bows. This, this is why you have gathered my relic. You know what must be done. Andromeda, you step towards this threshold, and you see a small pedestal, where an ancient inscription reads in Celestial, Behold the great seal of destiny, forever bound by threads of fate. Croxa, titan of death's hunger. Uro, titan of nature's wrath. Phalegi, titan of burning wind. Scotha, Titan of Eternal Darkness. When you read the name Croxa, specifically the word hunger, your creation's eye pings at a glowing that over that word, as if tampered with by some malevolent curse. Mm. Give me a religion or arcana check with advantage. Uh, it's just a flat roll because tired. Can I give myself guidance on this? Absolutely. This seems important. That's a 14. Okay. As this is happening, Clix is pretty bruised, but we'll start slowly limping and his way up just to see what's going on. Andromedy, seeing this inscription, seeing the prison fractured, even in just the slightest way compared to the tremendous size of its construction, you know that this is your purpose. And as you come to understand that... Your piety increases to 25. Well, dang. And additionally, your relic unlocks its final ability, seemingly its purpose. You gain the ability to cast the Hallow Spell. 
bending down to meet your face, Andromedy, she says, With this relic, the power to prevent any more of the blood of Croxa from seeping out into the underworld and into Theros beyond is given. However, the power of the Titans took all of the strength of my brother and myself to contain, as you have witnessed, the slightest fragment wielded by malevolent hand can have catastrophic consequences on the threads that tie our world together. With this hollow spell, it will not be enough to simply cast it once, my oracle. The binding must be maintained. I see. And zombies lets their head fall. They were already fairly tired, but now they show it even more. Their arms go limp, their knees buckle under them, and they slump down. I'm sorry, my friends. You must find this faceless mage without me. I am to remain here. I must renew the binding until it is solid once again. Is this the only way? Andromedes looks up at the gods. They will tell you it is. We know what we are meant to know to do what we are meant to do. Then here you will fulfill your purpose. Yes. Fuck purpose. I chased it my whole life, and it never did any good for me. The best thing that ever happened to me was meeting the three of you. Fuck your purpose. Come with us. I met you. I had the great pleasure of traveling with you and overcoming hardship with you because I served destiny. To defy it, that is what brought all this chaos. That thing, whoever they are, trying to make their own destiny, trying to mold the destiny of this world for their twisted entertainment. I cannot. I cannot leave this place. I must fulfill my purpose. Gran nods assuringly. He understands. Califex steps forward. Andromedy, you can't expect to spend the rest of your life down here. Look at where we are. Andromedy looks around. They look back at Califex and smile. I suppose compared to everything that's happened in the past few weeks, this is certainly an improvement on a city under siege or an ashen wasteland or an active volcano. I suppose I would like somewhere to bathe them. The least they can do is make you comfortable here. You can see Clothis extend her hand down in the opposite direction of this enormous structure where these seemingly endless stairs in the distance below come to an end at a small, ancient temple. She swirls away the arid dust and gas from this view, and she says, Fear not, creation's eye, you will have company. The wardens of the chain gather. You, yourself, sounded the call from Akros, and they will answer. And you, for as long as it takes, will lead them. Andromeda nods at this looks back to their companions and says, See, I will have company, though I will miss yours. One way or another, I know our fates will become entangled again. Uh, Clicks will walk up to Andromedy and just put a hand on their shoulder. Thank you. For everything. Andromedy will go in for the hug. Clicks will accept. Thank you for trusting me this far. Thank you for proving me wrong. Clicks will head back towards Gron and Califex. Wait just a moment. Andromedy will sort of lift Searly off of their shoulder and offer it to Clix. Take this with you, this creation of mine, so that I may they tap the center of their forehead so that I may keep an eye on you. Clix will give a, a nod and say, well, since you have company anyways, I might as well. And then Clix will make his way back to Gron and Califex. Clix, go ahead and give me a investigation check. 18. Okay. Clicks, you notice hanging off the edge of this space, a small piece of fabric. You look at it and you kind of twitch a bit. Your newfound 
knack of magical sight from Crufix. Being strong in his presence, you can tell this came from that nightmare muse after it was struck off from Clothis's attack. I'll pick it up. You can immediately feel a god-like power, even just in the small fragment. Give me an insight check. 18. Whatever lies ahead of you, clicks. You think that this could be the beginning of your lead towards finding that nightmare muse for Andromeda. Clix will go to pocket it, and then, on second thought, will show to Andromeda and say, I'll head back to the temple and find someone that can help us put this all together. It won't be as good as you, but we'll have to make do. You flatter me. Andromeda will close Clix's paw around the stray scrap. Since I can no longer see the threads of fate for you, let this thread carry your fate from now on. Clix will give it a light squeeze and then put it into his robe and walk towards Gron. The form of Crufix casts over Gron and Clix and Califex, and together with Mogus and Erois on either side of him, these three gods lift up their heroes as Clothis, remaining beside Andromeda, says, It is time. And in an instant... Gron and Clix and Califex, you are raised up and see the whole of Agonis leave your sight, chains holding this realm together, following you up and into the sky and into the heavens all the while. The rust changes from red to black, iron to brilliant bronze gold and stone and a myriad things until you ascend towards a light and the next thing you know you are outside of Death Bellow Canyon Mogus turning his back from the other two saying it is done and leaves Erois bowing down towards Califex and Gron says we owe this victory to you heroes Akros itself owes you her life, and perhaps the whole of Theros lay in your future. Standing and rising, he moves away until only Crufix remains. I have answered your call, Clix, fate thief. Clix, cunning dagger. Clix, thoughtful friend. There is much you will learn in time about your fate about that fate which you hold now in your hands, and the fate of those you care about. When that time comes, you must be ready. Lifting up towards the sky, he too fades. And now we have something of a flash forward. We join Gron, Clix, and Califex a few days later. You find yourselves looking out from Califex's villa in the Colophon overlooking several scenes of the reconstruction of the Polis of Akros. Beginning the recovery, you can see Polymede assisting a few flame speakers and other attendants in rebuilding various temples and compounds. In a large courtyard in front of the lower steps of the citadel, you can see Legion recruits training, preparing for guard duties and other various outpost excursions into the Phoboros. In the middle of that scene, you see Veronese training a newly emboldened Tyrannica in the ways of combat. Flying up to greet the three of you is Polymede, who after your victories and Andromeda's absence has become something of a go-between between between the three of you and the other powers that be in Akros. How have you found your rest as of late? I hope all of your accommodations have been met? Yes, of course. I've been restless, though. Not used to staying in one place for very long. As have I. Things feel like they've gone back to normal. I didn't like normal. Nor do I. What is normal anyways in a place like this? 
after so much has happened. Drawing from her robe, you see a large scroll. I thought it'd be important that I inform the three of you. I've just received a message from one of our scouting parties, signed by someone by the name of Bratos, who says, The whole of Skophos has united under a single goal. The vision of their god seems to have altered recently. His hate for Erois still remains. It is clear they are no longer allies against an unknown darkness. However, his efforts and those of his people have turned towards hunting down someone called the Nightmare Muse. Well, that is good news. The rest of the Pantheon, my own god of thunder even, wants this wicked mage to answer for their crime. But it seems Mogus wants to destroy them for it. One can only imagine the full wrath of the god of slaughter's anger. One need not imagine. Well, Akro should be safe, with Skophos otherwise occupied. Hmm, indeed. Even the few days that have passed since your return and the slaying of Marukios the Undying, a tentative peace has seemed to sweep across the lands of the West. Like that which had never been seen since the fall of Xenagos. Numbers of war bands that still walk and scour the Phoboros are less common, and even what Minotaur remain among the Rage Gore and the Fell Hide stick to their caves and dark places. Another report from yesterday said that no Bloodhorn have been seen ever since the Battle of Akros. Strange indeed. I think we all know peace is temporary. It's only a matter of time. On that note, Polymede, have you and yours uncovered anything about that? piece of cloth I gave you. Even as a scrap, the full extent of the magic of that cloth is very evasive. Our divinations point towards Phoenix being its origin. I believe it to be a fragment of his relic. Long ago, when Phoenix himself ascended into godhood, the legends say that in escaping Athreos, he cut a cloak from Athreos' own garb to elude him, and ever since has eluded the entirety of the Pantheon. This is what makes Phoenix and anyone who carries this artifact so dangerous, for not even the greatest detection of Krufix, let alone Kyrinos, can see them. We are still working on the rest. We do not know where it may have come from, or where this nightmare muse may have gone, but we are working on it. You are glad that you have trusted us with it. And I'll be at the ready when you do figure it out. Though I trust you'll send us at least one of your best oracles again. Turning to leave, with a spark of lightning in her eye, as she says, I would be lying if I said Andromeda wasn't one of a kind. I know you'll see them again. And with that, Polymede leaves. Some time later, Gran, in a brief moment of restful sleep, you are awaken as Califex, in a terror, wakes screaming. No! No, get me out! No, I can't be here anymore! <laughs> I hear this... I'm assuming I live in his house with me? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> I hear this and, and run to his room. <sighs> What's going on? <sighs> I have my axe in hand. <sighs> oh. Gron. Gron, I had the same dream. The same nightmare. That place. That place where that wicked oracle of half-truths banished me to dim blue flame. Cold, grey stone. I felt so alone. So helpless. It didn't end this time, though. It was longer. I heard the screams of a woman in the distance. Oh, Gron. She cried out. I could hear her words echoing across the chambers. What did she say? She screamed about... Xenagos's death. It was not for nothing. Heliod and someone named Daxos. And as he says this, Gron, you begin to hear as if an echo of this nightmare in your mind. The voice of this woman he is describing. It screams out in terror and in pain as she says, No! no! Xenagos' death was not for nothing! Heliod! 
Iliad, he betrayed me! This world! I shouldn't be here! Daxos! Why? No! I will not speak that secret even here! Not to you! No! No! You can't! No! Stop! No! Phyrexia! No! Not there! Anywhere but there! And in a flash, the echoes fade, and all that remains is the voice of that wicked nightmare muse that you recognize now, laughing. <laughs> Andromedy, you have been settling in to this ancient temple beneath the Great Seal. The days become hard to discern, if not for the seemingly regular passage of time. You go about your casting of the hollow spell on the Great Seal, and after a time, you see a company of individuals approach from the arid landscape in the distance. As they draw near, you can see they are led by a large minotaur, clad in gold chains and jewelry, a shock of silver mane and curling horns. They stomp their spear on the ground before you and bow. You need not bow. Tell me, who are you, and why have you come here to this cursed place? We have answered your call, Destiny Spinner. Creations, I. We, assembled from the corners of Theros. Before your call, we were mere people before other gods, bent by fate towards Clothis and this purpose now. We are your wardens of the Chained. Then you are welcome here. Please, I gesture towards the temple. You must be tired after your journey. The road to Agonus is not a one lightly traveled. Andromedy, after this scene, sometime later, you find yourself poring over a large scrying pool. Not too dissimilar from the ones you may have seen in the buried Forgotten Temple. What are you doing? Let me roll a d3. Show me Gron. Okay. As you look down into this pool, Gron, it could be a few days prior to your previous scene. It could be a few days after your previous scene. What might you be up to? Gron is in a library, trying to learn as much as he can about possibly titans, anything of history that ancient. Nice. That it might verge on the interplanar. Mm. Now, Gron, it's, it's polis, not policies. Polies. Ah, there you go. You're, you're getting there. You're doing so well, Gron. Califex, by your side, studying alongside you. Can I see what he's reading? Well, Gron, go ahead and roll me a history check with advantage by Califex's aid. Yeah, I don't add anything to history. That's a 17. Okay. Andromedy, from your point of view, kind of over the shoulder of Gron, you see that he is reading through a fairly familiar tome, however important, and that is the story, as it's told and as it's known, The Binding of the Titans by Clothis and Crufix's hands. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I see that. If I could deliver a message, I think I would. Now, there's a good companion piece to that. If I can remember where it might be found by Herosthenes. What is the title? It's called Layers of the Underworld and Their Guardians. Layers of the Underworld and Their Guardians. I say out loud. Layers of the Underworld? Gron, what did you think of that? That's brilliant. It just sort of came to me. With a smile, he turns towards you. Gron, you never cease to amaze me. And the two of you continue reading. Gron, you can't help but notice Califex's bandaged arm all the while. Clix, what are you up to? So Clix is on the bridge where he first met Andromedy and is helping a soldier repair the bridge. Clix, you are helping in the repair of the Faragax Bridge. You see other hoplites and young infantry soldiers still injured from the battle. Others look like they are fresh recruits. One of them 
as they lay some mortar beside you, say, No, 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 I don't believe you. There's no way you could have killed two dragons. Two cyclopses, too. I've heard the stories about you guys, but I just... How in the gods' names can that be possible? What a wondrous tale. Well, at first it was mostly me. By the time we got to the second Cyclops, I can't lie to you. I needed the help of my friends. And as you look around at some of these wounded soldiers, just remember, they're healing. And your wounds haven't even come yet. There will be a day when you need them. So it's best you learn to make some friends. Epic. Look at that personal yeah, growth. Fucking epic shit. God damn, that's good. <laughs> Clicks as you finish saying these inspiring words to this young soldier, you turn around, and in the distance, on the other side of the bridge, you see a familiar face. One you probably thought you'd never see again. Looking directly at you is Phaedra. Cool, cool. Speaking of friends, I have to see myself off. I'll walk towards Phaedra. Okay. You approach, lowering her hood, she says, You're a pretty easy person to find nowadays. I guess I stopped hiding. Well, don't consider this a courtesy, and it's not because I like you, but I found your man, the Oracle. He's in Melitus, at some amphitheater. I'd pull a lot of favors not to get myself caught. You're going to owe me big time for this. Don't you think I'll forget it so easily? I almost forgot what it was like to have debts. Kind of missed it. No, you didn't. Either way, yours will be paid. I know that it will. You know where to find me. And with a wink and a nod, she dons her hood and makes for the Akron gates. Clix is going to walk towards the edge of the bridge. Okay. And say to Seerly, well, I think we need to learn a little bit more about Melitus. What do you think? Um, And he's going to sit down at the edge of the bridge and start reading the Tome of Understanding. Hell yeah. Clicks, you begin reading as we turn back to Gron. Gron, what are you up to? Califex and I are sparring, like we used to do in the old days. Only I'm going kind of easy on him because of his arm. You can see he is wielding his spear with one arm, and tied around his back and his shoulder, his round shield. I think I can make this work. Yeah, you're doing fine. Who needs two arms? <laughs> Roll me a deception check. It's a nat 20. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Califex knows you so well, and yet even so, simply says, Thank you, Gron. I wouldn't be here without you. And I wouldn't be here without you. As I hit him. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> With the broad side of my axe blade. Deflects your blow yeah. with a shield. Gron, you can't help but shake all these days after your final defeat of Marukios. This feeling of unfinished business. Every once in a while, regardless of where you are, whether you're reading, whether you're sleeping, whether you're sparring with Califex, whether you're helping with clicks or Polymede or any of your other newfound allies in Akros. A flash of rage, burst of flame, and a voice. We aren't done. I know. Gron, who are you talking to? Uh, um, nobody. Don't worry about it. Gron, with the thoughts of Marukios and Mogus still fresh on your mind, We turn one last time to Andromedy. Andromedy, you are going about another one of your divination rituals, trying to discern what lies ahead for you, for your friends on the surface, for Clothis and the gods, for this foreigner. This, And as you come to the thought, you hear the gods in your mind finish it for you. Planeswalker. You look out toward the Great Seal, the towering archway. As Andromedy has been, over time, patching the damage to this seal, the threads of magic that they've woven, it's incomplete now, but you can see sort of at the top of the magic that's 
binding it together, the appearance of a tapestry that tells the story of Andromeda's exploits with Clix and Gron. Right now, there are some images with them meeting during the siege and ascending into the mountains to meet the flame speakers, but there's clearly more to be completed below. Sorry, go ahead. That's so fucking good. God damn. As you work this storied saga, you have flashes of a different vision, of a new one, unfamiliar, yet echoes of words enter your mind. You hear Clothis's voice, but you also hear others, ones you do not recognize, and they speak and say, Not a champion of destiny, but a triumvirate. There will come three mighty champions for three great relics. These words echo in and out. They continue in your mind as you work. The creation's eye. You have a flash of yourself. As you're working the tapestry, your mind flashes to your exploits. And the exploits of your party. Fleeing out of the siege. Sending the mountains and meeting the flame speakers. Entering the great halls of Perforos. Fighting dragons, cyclopses. Meeting Anax himself, scouring into the Ashlands and finding the Forgotten Temple, slaying a demon and recovering the Pyxis of Pandemonium, finding Gron's lifelong companion, Califex, returning to Akros, the battle against the Horde, and your final descent into the Underworld. And if you're just joining us for this episode, you can, you can get all of that cool stuff before... <laughs> As the words echo, you hear it continue. The furious heart. You see the vision of a young girl, maybe only eight or nine, with incredibly long black hair, like endless threads woven through the night sky. A small, simple blindfold, a single streak of white. She looks up and out into an endless sky of stars in wonder. And lastly, the words as they leave your mind this final thought and destiny's hand as it echoes you see the form of the beautiful young man literally molded into being out of that brilliant starlight by the hands of your god set about some unknown future path with glowing green eyes Andromeda is there any final thought you would like to put on this Andromeda sees these visions of these other champions works the flashes of them into the sort of outer edge of this tapestry they're creating to serve as the patch in this seal. I, I guess, like, do I get any sort of, from these, just f from the, the visions of these people, do I get any sort of emotional feeling? Like, do I get a sense of foreboding or do I get a sense of... Go ahead and give me a religion check with advantage. 18. Okay. As these fade in and out of your mind, you get the sense that while the visions of your own past are in the past, there is something strange at work in Clothis's grand design. The vision of the girl on an 18, you recognize, is of a place, an ancient place, something... You recognize the construction of this citadel. It's in Akros, but it's not its not the present, and it's not the near past. its It almost reminds you of when Kyranos was first installed as a god of Akros within the citadel, when they constructed his section of the temples. Everything looks new and pristine and brilliantly displayed and royal blue and red. The other, though, the, this man, you see a ruined scene of someplace else, distant past, your immediate past, this, this perhaps some strange future yet to happen. As you have all of these thoughts, an echo passes on the wind, saying, across time bound one fate. Unite these champions three, and the pantheon of Nyx behind them must follow. For lo, when this world faces its greatest enemy, they must and will be 
ready. I'm going to call two of my wardens to me. Okay. What is it you require? I sent each of you to seek another. You, Eris, I send to find a child, a young girl with a streak of white in her hair, blind as our goddess is. I saw her in Akros, though that was long ago. She may not be there now. Begin your search there. And you, Miros, a Nyx-born man, but more I cannot see. He is to be Destiny's hand, and she is to be the Furious Heart. Find them, and if you can, bring them to me. By Destiny's will, they bow and leave. And with that, the triumphs of the Protector Gron, the Slayer clicks, the Oracle Andromedae become etched into the annals of the present histories of Akros, the surrounding realms of Theros. Their exploits, adding to the storied, ongoing age of heroes. A nightmare muse lurks. To what end, who can say? But the blood of Croxa is now contained. A shadowed horde, destroyed and scattered. Akros, safe. And that is where we'll leave our story. Pods of the Multiverse is produced by Jimmy Afadigato. That's me, with music by Andy Berger and art by Alexa Riley. Subscribe to this feed to get a new episode every Monday. Check out the links in the show notes. You can support us by visiting our Patreon, joining our Discord, or sharing this episode with a friend. We want to give a special shout out to our holy Avengers, Jake, May, and Chris. For $10 a month on our Patreon, you too can become a holy Avenger. Thanks for listening.